Hello and welcome back to the channel on a completely clear day. Finally, we get to show you Mount Teide, the highest point in Spain, just in the distance. You see that peak there? That Zoom into that, Monica. That peak that Monica's zooming into now is, I think, 2,400 meters high, so almost two and a half kilometers high. And we're not going there today, but today we're going somewhere so unspeakably beautiful, it will change the way you think about life. I don't know if I'm going too far there, but honestly, I think it is the most beautiful spot in Tenerife. It's called La Masca, and until 1991, there wasn't even a road to get to it. It's hairpin bend after hairpin bend, and it's in the middle of a mountainous pass leading down to a valley to the sea, and it is just impossible to describe how beautiful it is. And let's hit the road for our first proper Tenerife road trip. Let's do the gear for the day at the start of the video because honestly, I'm gonna get, I'm almost shaking with excitement to go to Masca, so I will forget about it. Okay, here we go. Bottom to top, I need something comfortable and not too warm today uh, because it's about 27 degrees, I should say. TCX X-Blend boots, the most comfortable boots money can buy. Hood jeans, SK11s. These are the AAA rated, the highest safety rating, slim fit black jeans with, now this, for warm weather riders, this is superb. This is a Revit worker overshirt in sand. It comes with full armor apart from back armor, but it's just really thin, really stealth. White helmet which is so great for these warm days, it doesn't heat up. White helmet from DMD, that's the DMD 75 helmet, with, see what's in my basket, as Monica calls it. Panniers. Panniers, there we go. Okay, that's Monica's raised thread, ah, here we go. I didn't even know which I'd taken. These are the best, well, the coolest summer gloves I've got. They are the race, racer gloves Ronin, super, super slim and super, super cool. Let's hit the road, I'm too excited. Had to stop off, we're about 10 minutes away from La Masca, and this is a superb view of Teide, El Teide, the volcano in Tenerife. Almost two and a half kilometers tall, and I think, I think year round, that will still have a sprinkling of snow at the very top of the summit. And this area here, you probably noticed if Monica's done any B-roll, the roads are stunning and they're also incredibly well kept. So well kept, I almost don't know how Spain managed to afford maintaining such unbelievable roads. But you'll notice that a lot of motorcycle and car launches are done from Tenerife and they're done from roads leading up to El Teide and leading down to La Masca here. This is an incredible spot for car and motorcycle launches. And this view's good. Come with me, Monica, because this view is even better. And I think we should even see an uninterrupted view of our destination for today, La Masca, because La Masca is just within one of the valleys in this mountain range, and it is, it's breathtaking, breathtaking. Wow. One of possibly the finest view in Tenerife, this I think. Maybe the best view on the whole island. It's beautifully dramatic. Just sheer cliff faces on the side here. Valleys and ranges everywhere. And the road, have a look at this. So the road, 
leads all the way down here, snakes around this mountainside here, then comes all the way back here, and then leads down, and can you see Masca on the camera? Yes. Right yes, there. So that is La Masca, right there, that tiny development. I think only about 90 people live there. It was cut off until 1991 with no roads to get there. And then past La Masca, you can see on the other side of the mountain face, you've got the road that continues and winds around all the way to the other side of the island. Okay, should we hit the road and get to Masca? Yes. Let's go. We had to stop again because we found a spot and the view just gets more and more incredible. We're now right inside one of these harsh cliff faces on either side. And you can see, I mean, the road is just spectacular weaving around and you can see on each corner here, right on the cliff face, very difficult if there are two cars coming uh, head to head like that. But have a look at this. The, the greenery and stuff, look at this, so interesting. Tenerife, I think, I think is famous for aloe vera. So you get a lot of aloe vera lotions and things like this. And this is, it's just, it's so thick. It's huge, huge aloe vera trees. You also get, oh, there are two car drivers tooting. I mean, look at these. Let me see if I can get up here. Oh, 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 oh a lizard that big. Wow, Liz lizards, and look at all the cacti, just hugging the side of the rocky cliff face. It's so dramatic, you can almost imagine it from kind of a pirate film or something like that, hiding buried treasure. It feels so raw and wild. What an incredible place.
well with a superb view of Masca. And Masca is equally as interesting as it is stunningly beautiful because let's kind of give an overview. Out of the entire Macronesia archipelago, so that's the Canaries, Cape Verde, the Azores and Madeira, the Canaries were the only part of that archipelago or the archipelagos that had any proof of inhabitants before the Europeans came over in around about 1400, 1500. And of those archipelagos, Tenerife was one of the key points where a race of people called the Guanches lived. And the Guanches lived on the Canaries between about 1700 BC all the way up until the Spanish and the Europeans came over in about 1500 or so. And right here, right here, in Masca is one of the key points where the Guanches people lived. And here's what's so interesting. The Guanches people lived here in complete isolation, almost from the rest of the world. And a famous French explorer called, I've forgotten the name, but I'll put it here because he's a very famous French, French explorer, came over in about 1410. And when they were exploring the Canaries, he noted that they found the people called the Guanches and how they were the most beautiful people he'd ever come across, the most beautiful race he'd ever come across. And they were incredibly tall. They were five foot nine to six foot two. And this is about five, six hundred years ago. They were also incredibly strong and very friendly and they liked to party. And when the Spanish came over and they conquered the Canaries, they conquered Tenerife in 1496. That was the beginning of the end for the Guanches people. And after a few years later, once the Spanish had shipped everyone from mainland Spain over here, it was pretty much the end of the Guanches as we know it. It's, it's, and this, you can just imagine it right here on this harsh landscape. You would have to be incredibly strong to be able to survive here. There's lush vegetation down there, so there's clearly enough to live on, but having to climb up here and just hunt and fish all the time, incredibly difficult. And one thing that I found interesting about this, how are they here? In 2017, they did a genome test investigation. They found out that the Guanches people were originally from North Africa, but we know that they weren't sea-loving people. So how did they get here? There are a few theories that they could have been pirates dropping them off hot here and leaving them, or they could have been criminals dumped by African ships over here and just left. Because by the time that they left and by the time they were discovered in around 1496, apparently the Spanish described them as still living in the Stone Ages. They'd never seen metal, they'd never seen anything else, and they were living completely isolated from the rest of the world in places right here in Masca cut off from everywhere and they never progressed beyond the Stone Age. I had to just check, the French explorer was Bethencourt. He came over in 1410 and just imagine what it would have been like in 1410 exploring these islands and you come across a completely secluded, cut off group of people, what, 60 to 100 miles off the African coast, but white skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, six foot tall, living effectively in the Stone Age. I mean, it's just incredible, this history, really mind-blowing. You know, I will do some more research how do these Guanches people get here? Why here? I, I can't get my head around it. Like, specifically here, out of all the islands, just how many miles off the coast of Africa? It just blows my mind. And well, I guess there's lots of aloe vera to keep you healthy, but, and even the fact that it was completely blocked off till 1991, there were no roads to get here. The church here, this is the church of La Masca, and the capacity, eight people.
seriously thirsty in all this heat and we stopped off. I don't know if it's part of La Masca, but at least it's the village absolutely next door to it. And it says that there may be a little restaurant open. And look at the setting. So we've come down from this steep slope. You've got the mountains right behind us. Two little cats sleeping there. Three. One behind you. Three cats sleeping there. And look at the, the sheer cliff face over there. And these are houses that people live in at the moment. This is a proper living little village. And this, Casa Riquelm, this is where we're looking to go. But we have no idea if it's open. Wow. Oh, I don't know if that's it there or not. Keep going. I love these, just, you know, doors repurposed and things like that. Just built on the sheerest cliff face. It's incredible. How long have they been here? And they are the type of houses that just get passed down through generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, yeah. yep, that's it. We've just seen it. It's not open. We'll come back maybe in the morning or something when it definitely is open because that is a really breathtaking view. And actually, not only is it a good view of the cliff faces and the sea in front of me, you can actually see La Masca perfectly, just perched on, on the middle of the, the cliff face, just perched right on top of it, right on top. Things haven't changed. We are desperate for a drink. I actually need a drink so bad I can barely talk. We need to find a drink. I think the closest place, is... no, actually we went past 10 minutes, yeah, isn't go. it? 10 minutes, let's go, let's go. perfect way to finish the day. We're in the town of Santiago del Tede, which we think is one of the closest towns to the volcano of Tede just behind us. And it's a real biker hotspot just down the road there. Unfortunately, it was completely full. There were no tables. A about a dozen Harley riders, about a hundred meters up there, all pulled up on their Harleys, just having a drink and just probably unwinding after day's ride and then you've got sports bike riders going up and down a couple of KTMs just parked up there an old western looking bar just behind Monica and here we are right in the middle view of La Masca well La Masca just behind the hill two I know I always say it but you're going to get this a lot two almost showroom condition white vans I mean they are absolutely pristine I love these old Citroens and the Toyota as well wheel arches everything not not even a millimetre of rust on them, but should we end it here? Yes. It's been just an amazing, amazing day. Thank you so much for coming along with us on what is our first proper ride in Tenerife, and it really does feel incredible. So thank you so much. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one.